Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Liam Moore. I am in the Munster Technological University based in Cork, Ireland. In this third training unit of Training in Six, we're going to look at MQTT and the security options that are available within MQTT. Again, focusing on the Mosquito um, configuration options, but the same security options are generally available across all technologies, Hive MQ, whatever it might be you want to use yourself. Um, and the idea here is to impart the knowledge of these security options as much as anything else. Again, this is the Remain project co-funded by the European Union under the Erasmus Plus uh, framework. So these are the training units we've looked at uh, so far as part of training unit six. We looked at the MQT configurations. We've done some broker uh, demonstrations using Mosquito. And now we're going to take a quick look at the security options. What we want to do is understand what security, security options are available when using MQTT. So security in MQTT is aimed at stopping access to communication streams between clients and brokers and to ensure that no bad actors insert themselves into the MQTT network. Ultimately, you want to be able to authenticate all communications and all clients that occur within the MQTT network. If you're running a secure network, you don't want, uh, in terms of bad actors, client, a malicious client coming onto your uh, network, spamming your broker with messages or injecting false messages into your network. Uh, and MQTT is set up to allow various levels of security to stop this threat from happening. These security options include client authentication, such as client IDs, ensuring that each client has an ID. And if you want to have that client ID on a list of approved client IDs for access to the network, Clients can be asked to present usernames and passwords, and you can also have uh, client certificates um, that are generated specifically for your clients using um, software such as OpenSSL. You can secure your data using encryption, and it uh, MQTT supports the latest in TLS uh, security um, options, and there's other restrictions. Um, where you can restrict clients to certain data allowing tiered approach to data access. Now you also have the option of broker bridging as well, where you can partition your MQTT network into separate subsections, each controlled by their own broker. Um, and then there's broker to broker communications for data of interest to pass. Um, all these things are options and each broker can have its own set of security certificates or its own set of passwords and so on, allowing a more robust approach. When we talk about client authentication, you want to authenticate a client um, that it's an it's a genuinely uh, genuine client within your network trying to access uh, your resources. You can do this with client IDs. MQTT publishers, subscribers, and broker bridges must supply a client ID. They can connect anonymously if you want, but it's for a secure network. You would want them to supply a client ID. In Mosquito, the broker can impose prefix restrictions on the client names, and this can allow a very basic level of security. For example, you could enable it that all clients must have a prefix of PL1, say process line one, uh, and the following client could access the broker, but clean line 1022 could not if it didn't have that prefix. In your configuration file, you'd enable this with the client ID prefix as PL1. And again, this is just a simple example to show you how it can be used um, and gives it again a certain level of authentication. Quite basic, it still wouldn't stop spoofing attacks and so on of um, joining your network, but it does give a first layer of authentication. You can ask for client usernames and passwords. And much like any system such as a Windows PC, a valid username and password can be requested from MQTT clients. Uh, but this is without encryption. If you don't have encryption enabled, the passwords and usernames get transmitted in clear text. So again, if there's a man in the middle listening to your messages, they would be able to obtain these um, passwords and messages or if there's anyone sniffing your network traffic and so on. But again, it's another layer of authentication that can be used. And again, you may not want the full uh, whack of um, security options enabled. If you're working within a fairly secure network, let's say at your level two within a factory, you may go unencrypted with certain authentication in place, or you may go completely open if you want, if you're, if you're certain your network is secure from a physical access point of view. To enable these options in the config file for Mosquito, it 
would be with the following, you allow anonymous false, so you're, you're saying anyone without a client ID is not allowed on the network. You supply a password file, location of the file on uh, where your client is accessing from, uh, and you can use the pa Mosquito Plus password utility to create the passwords. You can also implement client certificates. Since client IDs and username can be a useful way to secure comms in secure networks, networks that you trust, um, level zero, one, or two, but by far the most secure way to authenticate, authenticate a client is to use client certificates. And we will explain this in more detail under SSL and TSL security. So these are certificates that are presented by the client to the broker. They'll have expiry dates, they'll have authentication information, they'll be encrypted. And the um, broker itself can use these certificates to authenticate your client. Uh, and they're very difficult to um, crack sniff or spoof, but if the place where you manufacture your certificates is uh, not secure, then there's another avenue of attack there, but that's something you could discuss with your OT or IT team. So securing data, you could start with encrypting the payload specifically, the payload being the relevant data from the client that's the data of interest. Uh, using payload encryption, the applications that are com communicating or a dedicated security service encrypts the data. So there's a separate service running that's going to encrypt the data before transmission over the MQTT network. This secures your data to whatever level the applications are going to use. So it's application specific, but it does not secure the MQTT specific data, such as your client IDs, usernames, and passwords, just the data packet itself. It can be a more lightweight way of securing data as the clients and brokers don't have to do anything from an MQTT perspective as the data is coming to them already encrypted. A little diagram below here kind of tries to highlight what that might look like. Is uh, basically taking the data in, you're encrypting it before it goes into an MQTT packet and then it's encrypted data within the packet uh, and that gets sent out um, over the MQTT network. You can also use TLS and SSL security within your uh, MemQTT network itself. Um, and it can be used to, uh, to a very high level of security. It's currently what's used to secure uh, communications on the internet. If you ever access a banking app or so on, and you see the little icon showing that you have secure ne network communications, they're generally using from some form of transport layer security. It's not an MQTT specific piece of technology, Tons of other protocols will employ the same security, but it does provide data encryption, data integrity, and authentication all wrapped into one um, layer. And it can offer a layer of confidence that no one has read your messages, changed your messages, and both the client and broker are authorized to communicate. This is done um, using things called certificates between the broker and the client themselves. Uh, it adds, I suppose, weight to the communications, it adds extra layers that need uh, to be. Um, navigated uh, during the actual communications phase so it can slow down your network but it does make it secure so if you have a sensitive message to send to someone how do you ensure no one else reads it that are you are confident you're sending it to them and they are confident it is coming from you that is all the layers basically of security kind of wrapped up into a very simple example you want no one to read your message you want to make sure you're sending it to the right person and they have to be confident that they got it from you. So to ensure no one else reads it, you can encrypt it. And you and the recipient will have to have the same encryption keys to be able to encrypt and decrypt the data. To be confident of them, you can ask for proof from them before they get it. So you can, you know, email them, text them, call them up, whatever you might want to do and ask them to identify themselves. And to be confidence coming from you, you can sign it in a special way that they will understand that the data can only come from you. This is all done using keys and certificates. Use of keys, which are numbers combined with messages, allow encryption and signing of messages. For SSL, keys the numbers used to alter message with a special algorithm are split between public and private keys. Messages get encrypted with the public keys, but can only be decrypted with the private key. So the public key can be available to encrypt the data, but um, private key is only kept by those who need to understand the message. The keys take care of the data obfuscation. The certificates are used to authenticate the client and the broker. 
A certificate is a way to allow each party to establish the identity of the other and kick off an encrypted communication session. And certs should be generated by a trusted certificate authority and will contain, contain information such as email address, certificate owner, duration the cert is valid, common, a distinguished name, information, country and locality, all that sort of stuff. Now, these are all very important things. If you ever have accessed a website with a cert that might have expired or a cert that isn't from a trusted certificate authority and isn't it within your um, browser's uh, trusted certs, you might get a message saying, uh, trusted source or someone do you wish to continue. This is all down to the certificates uh, not being um, expected or not being trusted. And you, when you when a cert is generated, it can be generated for a certain period of time with the knowledge or expectation that the certs get updated uh, from time to time, especially as security measures move on. Just a few steps on how it all happens within MQTT. Your client pops up, it says hello, so that's client to broker, and it initiates a TSL, TLS handshake by sending a client hello message to the MQTT broker. This message will include all information about the client's TLS capabilities, supported cryptographic algorithms, and a random value. Now, if anything doesn't match here with the broker, let's say if the TLS capabilities are not within the broker's capabilities or the TLS capabilities are considered out of date, then you might get an error message at this point. The server hello, the MQT broker responds with a server hello message, selecting the strongest mutually supported TLS parameter and algorithms, and will also contain the broker's digital certificate. Client cert, if the MQT broker requires client authentication and you don't have to have it, you can do it without client authentication, the client will send its own digital certificate back to the broker. Then the MQT broker will send its digital certificate to the client, and the client can verify the certificate's authenticity against a trusted certificate authority list to ensure it's connecting to the correct broker. Again, this all happens with your web browsers as well. At this point, the client and broker will exchange key information, allowing them to generate a shared secret key for encryption and decryption. And when finished, both the client and broker send a finished message to indicate the handshake is complete. Once all this is successful, both the client and broker switch to encrypted communications using the shared secret key, and all subsequent MQTT messages, including published and subscribed, are encrypted and decrypted using this key. So that's just a quick overview of security. Um, all these are configuration settings within a file on your broker. Um, and again, this project and presentation is brought to you by the Remain project, funded under Erasmus Plus, which is co-funded by the European Union. Uh, and if you want more information, please click on the link here.